Have you ever done a cutout in Photoshop just to find out you have a thin black or a thin white line around it? I'm going to show you how to get rid of those and get pixel perfect cutouts. Hey, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So today we're going to get rid of those dreaded fringes around our cutouts. Here's a photograph that I shot of Callan and I quickly cut it out. And you know what? We see these edges around here. I'm now going to show you a technique I've been using for years and it works every single time. Super simple. So I've got lots of tutorials on how to cut out photos in Photoshop. I'll link some underneath. Right now, we're going to focus just on getting rid of those color fringes right now. Okay, so step one, we need to load the selection of our cutout. So the way to do that is to go over to the layers panel and I'm going to hit the control key and every command on Mac and just click on the layer mask and it's going to load the selection, the marching ants. Now, if you didn't work on a layer mask, nor do you, because you really should. <laughs> um, just control click on the layer instead to select the transparency. All right, so what we've done now is we've got this selection. Let's go to the arm here and we'll have a look. And what we need to do is make it a little bit smaller, but that's not all. Let's have a look. The first thing we're going to do, make sure the layer mask is selected or the layer if you're working directly on it. And then we're going to go under select. And this is where we deal with everything to do with selections is under the select menu. So we want to modify that selection and what we're going to do is contract it and two pixels. So I'm not going to give you an arbitrary number for anything. Two pixels always works. All right. So now that we've selected two pixels, click OK and you'll see now that our selection is contracted. Now we could work exactly here and it would work and it would give it a very, very sharp outline, but it's not going to be a really realistic outline because there's usually a little softness on the edge because of depth of field. So, and also it just makes things blend in better. So we want to add that. So let's choose select again. And what do we want to do with the selection? We want to modify that selection. And then under modify, we're going to choose feather. This is how we soften a selection. Now I'm going to choose one pixel. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to give us one pixel in and another pixel, which is going to just allow us to do our blending. Then we're going to click OK. So right now we have got our selection ready to go. The only problem is we've selected our model and we don't want to be selecting our model. We want to be selecting everything, but so we need to inverse that selection so we can use command shift I or go under select once again. Everything to do with selections is here and then just choose select inverse. Now you can see the marching ants around the edge. And if we zoom in really close here, you'll see what's happening. See what we've done. Now we've created this area here. So now we can clean up that selection very easily because we're now going to be working on the outside and kind of eating into it. I don't just want to hit the delete key though, because that's also going to do some strange things to the hair. Um, so I want to work on this manually and I have other tutorials on hair and I'll create more in the future. If you want them, let me know in the comments underneath. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select our mask and uh, we are going to hit the B key for the brush. And I'm just going to grab a brush here and it can be a reasonable size. And now what we want to do with this is make sure we've got black as our foreground color. Make sure our opacity and flows turn up to 100. And then all we do is we just click and drag over there. Now we can hide this while we're working by hitting Command H. And notice we're almost there. We can actually go over a second time. And notice as we go over that second time, now we get an absolute perfect cutout right there. And if we zoom out 
and we can easily just make the brush a little bigger and then just see this, just go over all these areas that we want to fix. Go to the other side where the other arm is and look at this. In fact, I can even go, just get a huge brush and just go all the way around the edges. Look at that. And see what we're doing? That color fringing just disappears. And if it's not enough, just go back over a second time. And then what the second time is actually going to do is it's going to kind of reduce some of that feathering. So only go a second time if you really need it. But you can see what we do. We just go around there now and we can simply just brush away all those color fringes. And it's going to make all your cutouts look a whole ton better. I got a question for you guys today. Are you Mac users? Or are you PC users? Let me know in the comments underneath. I'm really curious because a lot of conferences I do, the majority of people are Mac users, but I'm finding that online, I'm finding more and more Windows users. So I'm curious what you guys use. So by the way, if you like these kind of tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to Photoshop Cafe. Just hit the subscribe button right now and ring that notification bell. And then you'll be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial, which is every Tuesday. And also uh, throughout the week, I do other tutorials. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.